<laughs> this weekend, you know who uh, blamed <laughs> the Democrats for this horrible law separating immigrant families at the Mexican border. Um, you want to school him on how this actually worked? Right. So this is an administration policy that is separating these families, a Trump administration policy. And if Donald Trump wants to change it and let families stay together, he can change it. But the fact that those families are being separated at the border, the fact that children are being torn out of the arms of their mothers is on Donald Trump's head Thank and you. nobody else. That's right. Even though there's a policy in place under a... The, this is what gets me about where we are right now, is the administration is the one that decides day by day by day, where are we on these kinds of rules. There are some things, as you know, have to go through Congress, takes forever. There are some things that are often administrative agencies. This one is one the president makes the decision. And now what are we all doing? We're all talking about something else. We're talking about yeah. photographs. We're talking about mm -hmm. what could have been done two years ago or four years ago or 10 years ago. Well, Let's face it. We need comprehensive immigration reform. Mm -hmm. That's, we need real change. Yeah. We need systemic so change. So you're saying that instead of, just to follow up on that question, you're saying that instead of blaming Democrats and, and just fetching about it, why not just change fix it, it right now? You if Bush you too. think yeah. it's yeah. wrong, Bush too. exactly. Yeah. Let's not go backwards in the blame game. Mm -hmm. If you mm -hmm. think it's wrong, change it. Right. And if you don't think it's wrong, if you're not willing mm -hmm. to change it, then yes. own it. Because it's, it's law. on That's you. That's not right. a law. It's, it's a not policy. a law. Well, so, I could talk about this for hours, but comprehensive okay. immigration reform is something oh. that... As you know, many people have tried for very a long well, time, and exactly. nothing gets people out protesting and emo sorry. It's, it's crazy. Yeah, Let's it continue. Crazy, Much more yeah. important. But you know, but it <laughs> is a moment to say this is about political courage. Mm -hmm. It's about whether or not your party or there are constituencies who don't want it, or the pieces are hard to put together. There are people like your dad who stepped up and said. This is what is right yeah. for America, yeah. and I will no. fight for it. Yeah. That's, that's what we need right. more. And yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So the other thing that's going on right now is that Trump is peddling this uh, spy gate, as he calls it, which basically is saying that the Democrats, uh, the FBI, spied on the campaign, the Trump campaign when he was running. And basically he, even though nothing has been shown to be true about any of that, he's just right. making it up as he goes along, uh, <laughs> it is resonating with public opinion. People are believing him. So what, if, what are you guys going to do about it? Well, you know, look, Trump has figured out what works. Mm -hmm. And that is, the more he is afraid of what the special prosecutor Mueller is doing, the more Trump is worried about where that investigation is going. And remember, that investigation has already produced 16 indictments yes. or guilty pleas. Yes. So this is a Over serious, charges have been yes, filed. a serious criminal <laughs> investigation. Mm -hmm. As Trump hears the hoofbeats that that's getting closer to him, yep. he's throwing everything he can in the road, including, oh, yeah, let's undermine the it. FBI, let's Look, undermine the CIA. Senator, they're let's buying it. Everybody. The Republican Party backs him up a large percentage still. So. You know, but that's the problem. Everybody follows and has the conversation that Trump wants them to have, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. rather than the conversation about saying, as I think we should be doing, we need to protect Mueller so mm -hmm. that he can finish his investigation mm -hmm. without political interference mm -hmm. from Democrats or Republicans. Mm -hmm. Let him finish, let him make a report to the American people, and then we can judge what's happened. Trump That's doesn't what want we want. He yeah. doesn't want that. <laughs> I think the feeling is, though, that even on Election Day, there were a lot of Democrats calling for his impeachment. Okay. And you've put forward an impeachment bill in the past. If Democrats end up taking over Congress, do you think that that's, that should be the focus, is impeaching President Trump? Look, I, I take this very seriously. I mean, this I is a serious <laughs> constitutional move. My view on this is protect the special prosecutor. Right. Mm -hmm. Let him finish his work without political interference. Let him make a full report to the American people. And then collectively, we can make the decision about what the appropriate next step is. Mm -hmm. It's Donald Trump who doesn't want Mueller to be able to continue an independent right. investigation and bring it to of a course conclusion. Not. Right. And that's the part why. right now, okay. exactly, that's <laughs> the part right now that we keep getting pulled off on. But if an impeachment bill was already put into place. I, I'm not there. Okay. Okay, Good. where I am is, is that 
we need this independent investigation yeah. without political interference. Look, that's what we owe to the American people. This is more important than politics. Mm -hmm. This is more important than whether or not you agree with him on a hundred different things. Mm -hmm. What matters is that no one in this country, no one, not even the President of the United States, is above, above the, the law. law. That's right. That's the key. And, you know, uh, there were the discussions about President Trump possibly getting a Nobel Peace Prize because of his <coughs> work with North Korea. Well, there, there were discussions about this. I think Who 18... started those 18, discussions? He did. Well, I know that some, some, some Republicans <laughs> did nominate him for, for a Nobel Peace Prize. But, and it looks like this summit between Trump and Kim Jong-un is back on again. Um, do you think it's a, a good idea? And do you think Trump does deserve credit for, maybe, look, maybe not a Nobel Peace Prize, but maybe credit for it? Look, let, let me start with this. Uh, North Korea is a really bad actor. They mm -hmm. pose a danger to them, uh, to their, uh, to South Korea, to our allies in the region. They pose a danger to the United States and to the entire world. Mm -hmm. I want to see America find a way to help move North Korea to denuclearization, where they don't pose this threat. Okay. That's hard. Yeah, that's hard. And what it takes to move in that direction, you've got to have a plan. And you've got to have people to execute against that plan. You know, w right now, we have a State Department where tons of people have been laid off. Yeah. It's like tumbleweeds blowing through the place. You know, there's just <laughs> not a lot of folks on the ground who are the experts. I want to see a plan, and I want to see America succeed. What Donald Trump has done is it's like, you say, it's back on. Oh, well, yeah. it's back on as of right now. Is it going to be there back on as of an hour from everything. now or 10 <laughs> hours from now? There's no strategic plan here but you know what? that they're working against. There's a strategic plan here, and Senator Warren is sticking around. <laughs> we'll right. be right back. <laughs> we are back with Senator Elizabeth Warren. Sonny. Now, I loved your book, as oh, you know. Oh, good. I Thank just you. loved it. And you've added a new chapter. I have. Uh, and it's, uh, your book is called This Fight is Our Fight, but in it you write, anyone who thinks the vir virulent legacy of racism has ended is willfully blind. Are you talking about this president? Yes. What do you mean by that? <laughs> wow. <laughs> what, what did you mean by that? Yes, but, and so many more, that what I talk about in This Fight is Our Fight is about the fight for opportunity mm -hmm. for all of us. Uh, you know, I'm a kid who grew up in a family that didn't have much. My daddy ended up as a janitor. My mom worked a minimum wage job at Sears. My three older brothers all joined the military. That was their ticket to the middle mm -hmm. class. Me, I wanted to be a public school teacher. It mm -hmm. meant college. I got married early, dropped out of school, ended up graduating from a commuter college that cost $50 a semester. Wow. And here I sit today. I'm, I'm the daughter of a janitor who became a United States senator because America <laughs> invested in yeah. I am so deeply grateful to that America, but at the same time, I am so worried that we are just tossing that out. And not, not just now. Mm -hmm. This has been going on for 25 years mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. An America that works better and better and better for billionaires, better and better and better for giant corporations, and just doesn't work for working families, for middle class families, for poor families that are out there trying for to military make families. Military <laughs> families. So what I'm talking about in this book is the importance of saying we can rebuild a country that works for everyone. Are you White, running, are black, you running for brown? president? Senator? No. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? You know what? I'm running to fight for America's middle class. I'm up for Senate re-election. Yes. Right. 2018 got more stuff Massachusetts. To do. So our thanks to Senator Elizabeth Warren. Her book, This Fight, is Our Fight, is now available in paperback. And you know what, y'all? You know you're taking it home, right? You're taking it home. Paul said, we can't do this. We said, you have another year to get ready. For the ones who were ready to do it, we said, you can do it right now or any time up until that year. So we did not delay it. That was a mischaracterization. Uh, you know, I'm sorry. The reports were that you tried to dis delay that, it and got into some trouble. Those, and were, those were the reports. You know, That's not the facts. Mr. Secretary, a lot of people are criticizing you for spending tens of thousands of dollars in taxpayer money on fancy furniture, and don't get me wrong, I think scamming the taxpayers is a scandal. 
But the biggest scandal of your tenure is your unwillingness to do your job and enforce the laws that reduce housing discrimination and segregation across this country. Decades of housing discrimination have helped create an enormous wealth gap between white and black families. And the gap between white homeownership rates and black homeownership rates is 30 percentage points larger than it was back in 1968. In 1968, the typical black family had one-sixth as much wealth as the typical white family. Now it is one-tenth. We have gone backwards since the civil rights era. It is HUD's job to help end housing discrimination. That's what the law said. You said you would enforce these laws. You haven't, and I think that's the scandal that should get you fired. Well, I don't think that you uh, have characterized things in any way close to what is accurate, but you're welcome to say whatever you want. No, I, I really resent that remark. I have asked the question about how it is that delaying enforcement of rules that were already in place to delay, uh, to uh, help end housing discrimination would help. I ask you to make and your I, and case. And all you can you. say is and compliance costs were high. No. That does not explain how it is that you were going to delay enforcement of those rules and that was going to help end housing I, discrimination. I think I explained it to you quite well that with the small well, we area of fair very, markets that we, we your, did not tell people that, that they couldn't do it. I would not describe it We told them that they could well. do it, go ahead with that immediately. There's no delay if you're ready to do it. You won't even look at the data that's come into HUD. That's not a commitment to ending housing discrimination. Senator Brown. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Welcome, thank Secretary. You. Glad you're here. Uh, 5,200 Ohioans died from drug overdoses in the 12 months measured by the most recent CDC report, a 36% increase from August to August, what we have. That number probably understates the deaths. You apparently hired a 24-year-old campaign worker with no relevant experience to work on this issue at HUD. Is that true? Uh, there was someone who was hired. I generally don't get involved with uh, okay, so lower good. level. Okay, so you don't get involved in tables selection. Your wife does, even though she's not a federal employee. Uh, you don't get involved in ethics issues. If you're going to be throwing out these kind of charges, you should give me an opportunity to answer. Okay, I will after I'm finished with the last question. Last June, you hired a chief information officer.